Welcome everybody to the Monday, September 26th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, Bill Cantor, the chair of the Select Board, to call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda, voting to approve the minutes of September 12th, 2022, and the exciting minutes for meeting at the Charlemont Transfer Station, on September 21st. Yeah, look good to me. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Both meetings of the 12th and the 21st. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. We have three warrants. Um, accounts payable warrant, the amount of $101,744.27. The payroll warrant. In the amount of $117,790.33, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $29,733.18. Did note that there, the unusual thing about this week's warrant was that Mike sent them over the weekend, like the account, the town accountant. And so I did realize that that was probably meaning that he wasn't going to be in the office on today. And, was not in the office today, but I did go through. I did go through all those. And I, thought that, I, I didn't have any questions about any of that. But you all saw. But uh, I'll move to approve all three warrants. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, meetings attended by select board members. Um, nothing apart from the. Um, oh wait, Chris is first right? Yes, I oh, yes, 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 flex your seniority, flex that seniority. Uh, so I met with uh, Beth at the planning board to review the uh, telecom bylaws and help um, get up to date on those since I have a background for it. Um, obviously, we were all at the Charlemont transfer station, and then Veronique, um, Ron, and I met at the uh, highway department to uh, deliver the facilities and to uh, uh, do an inventory there. And I was just at the transfer station meeting. Yeah, I think um, I think at the end, once we've done all the you know public business, maybe we can have a fuller discussion about thoughts from that. We were there for over an hour. I did ask them a ton of questions, and they were very very nice. Um, and I thought it was useful. They do everything different than us. So it was just a complete. Yeah. And, and the reason that we went there is because the longtime select board member, Marguerite Wilt, Wilt, Wilt whatever, um, um, when, when, when the previous time when we were talking about the transfer station and the issues surrounding its management, not or just running it, um, it, it was in the recorder. And they, we used the somebody used the word trash a palooza to describe it. I don't know what that could have been, but um, and uh, Marguerite replied that uh, you know that 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 all the problems that we had identified, Charlemont had solved. So please come over and we'll show you. And the, so it, so that was interesting. I don't know if they didn't really have our problems. Only we have our problems, but. Uh, they have an entrance and an exit. Yeah, there. yes. So it's that it. was a big, that was it's one it. major difference. So, <laughs> so, with that. so if that's okay, we'll, the, the, the discussion about that, we can, we'll, we'll wait to, to it later on. The, um, I, and I had a Frontier School Committee meeting. I had a Conway Grammar School Committee meeting. And I'm missing a whole bunch of other meetings as well, but it's okay. Um, public comments. Anybody have any public comments? Um, we have no unfinished business. New business. First item on the agenda the annual tax classification hearing. <laughs> yes, and this is a joint meeting. Therefore, we have to call the assessors uh, to order. Wonderful. Yes. Call to order at 6 05 p.m. Uh, present all three assessors. We are on. And we are <laughs> look forward to doing this every year. Yes. Uh, a little earlier than usual, thank goodness. The classification hearing is for the where a town must decide whether to have single 
tax rate for against all properties, all real estate and personal property, or to reduce the share of the tax levy paid by residential by shifting some of it over to commercial, industrial, and personal property. And that involves reviewing certain fact figures and factors uh, and adopting a residential factor that will do exactly what we want, what you choose. Technically, this is supposed to be run by you, but since I didn't give you this great pile of papers ahead of time, may I ask for permission to? Please. <laughs> Continue. Absolutely. Oh, dear. I was gracious of you to even ask, but it wasn't, it wasn't that. Yeah, but, but, well, that's all right. Yeah. yeah. Our preliminary values have been approved by the state, and this step tonight allows us to submit the final recap figures to the state, which we hope will be approved by the end of the week, so that you'll have a final approval on the tax rate and bills can be sent out. Now, the... There we go. Too many papers. The total value of real estate in Conway this year is at $320,325,906. Uh, That's largely because of the overall increase in sales values. That's completely the cause. In order to achieve the parity we need to with the sales values, we had to put an 8% increase on all property, real estate, and um, not personal property, but all real estate except land and chapter enrollment of 8%. So plus 8% across the board, plus any other adjustment that might be indicated for a specific property, new, new growth, you know, new construction, anything like that. However, this is resulting in a significant reduction in the tax rate. The Total amount needed to run the town this year is $7.76 million. We have, from other sources, estimated revenues of $2.26 million. So the amount that's necessary to raise from taxes, or raise and appropriate as the phrase is, is $5.5 million. Well, $5.5 million divided by our total valuation comes out to a tax rate of $17.15, which is down 80 cents, quite a considerable amount from last year. And that's the, the number that we expect to be approved by the state this week. That's what we're putting in. Um, what was so the increase in growth from last year? The increase in growth, well, it's going to be uh, overall probably about six and a half percent. Is the chapter lands offset it a bit, something like that? I didn't do that exact calculation. No. The just to see how it works out on a levy, levy limits and so forth. Um, last year's levy limit was 5.755 million. This year we would be able to fill up to 6.084 million according to the state's formula. We have never billed as high as we could. That would put us at a $25 tax rate and we've not needed to. We've always kept a good margin. And right now uh, we have about a 25, well, five, five and a half million out of six million is going to be, okay, it's been a long day. <laughs> Who has a computer? I don't have mine with me. 5.5 out of 6. 500,000. Yeah, 5.5 five, five, five divided by 6. What percentage is that? Okay, so we went up the 8%, it's 7.5%. Uh, and that means, I'm sorry, that means a 7.5% uh, increase in the living limit. We're well within that at 5.5 million. So this is good and is generally looked upon fondly by the Department of Accounts, part of the uh, Department of Revenue, which deals with the individual towns as being indicative of pretty solid conservative management. Also looks good on our bond ratings. 
no. Anytime we should need to, to borrow. It's also, you know, when the part of the frontier budget committee, when we always compare the four towns finances and our ability to pay the budget, Conway always leads the league mm -hmm. in the amount between actual and levy limit. Um, really compared to the other three towns. I mean, Sunderland's always We're right. The up, Sunderland's always right up to it. And uh Deerfield's pretty close yep. usually and Waitley fluctuates, but we're we're always mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's not well, which, which isn't really the best thing when you're always trying to shift costs away from Conway on the other three towns and they're always crying levy limit, levy limit. But, um, that's true, but right at the moment we've not had any huge expenditures lately. We may be looking forward to them. We don't know yet. And having to buy a new vehicle, you know, things like this where we borrow, this ends up being very important and, and um, a positive, positive feature. Yeah, the, let's see, that's the capital town meeting. We do have several new houses building right now. Which is very exciting. They've done a real slowdown in construction, but that was primarily because we had such a good inventory of property for sale. But we have four or five houses right now under construction at one stage or another, and that's good for the town. It'll be bringing more more people to the town, I think. Um, Do we still have a, a large backlog of vacant homes? No, Dude. they can they can perhaps uh, not on the market though. Right. We have only six properties on the market. Right. Two of which are land. But there wasn't, wasn't there something like 70 homes that were? Well, there was a large number. Um, some of them have now been rehabited, and some still have plans to be, and some are still vacant. Yeah. Now, the, of course, the question here is do we have a single rate or a split rate? I ran the figures for splitting it our maximum uh, minimum residential factor is uh, 885.8276 that's the most we could split we could shift would be 15 percent if we did that the sorry make it make that minimum residential factor of 91.7437 so 1.5 shift to commercial industrial personal property would result in a residential tax rate of 1573, where we all cheer in the streets, but a commercial and industrial and personal property of $25.73. And that would be uh, a real challenge for anyone owning a business here in town or anyone with land in chapter from uh, enrollment. And the agricultural industry here in town would be very hard hit by that, as would our small businesses. Um, even the hydro plant would probably complain. You know. But at any rate, that's the one complaint that I wouldn't mind, actually. But everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That'd be a problem. A 1.25 shift, half of that would look residential at $16.29 uh, per thousand and commercial industrial personal at 22.34. Still quite a wide gap from $17.15 if we do a single rate. Not, not a huge improvement really for the residential, although none of us would sneeze at a dollar tax rate less, but an extra burden of anywhere from five to eight dollars per thousand for the commercial industrial and professional uh, personal property. Is there Greenfield still does a split rate? They have been in recent years, yes. And anybody else in the county does do it? No. And have we ever had split rate? No, we have not. We have not, but it's important that we review it. It's obligatory to review it at this meeting. And you, as the um, Board of Selectmen, need to vote on whether to adopt a residential factor of one, which results in the taxation of everyone being at the same rate or to adopt one of the res minimum residential factors that would split the rate. And is there still an option for a central district district or central village rate that's separate? 
that it's a separate carve out that that there I'm using the incorrect terminology, but I think I there's think a glimmer of recognition like in your eyes that yes. you might know what I'm talking about. Yes. Um it would certainly be a parcel by parcel. There would be a possibility, I think, of putting a an extra charge or a reduction somehow of adjusting a charge. I, I don't think there is any more, to tell you the truth, Phil. Okay. I'd have to look into it. I think that might have disappeared. But certainly it could be affected, uh, it could affect properties individually. Yeah. Yeah. So just to be clear, Deerfield and Wakefield don't have a split. I believe Deerfield has, not yes. Lately, I don't know. They have not in the past, but they, they again, they have the industrial park over near South Deerfield. They have a great deal more on Route 5 than we have. They have Yankee Candle. They have Yankee Candle, our Yankee Candle. Deerfield, of course, would be crazy on us with it. But they have, they have an unusual burden in all of the uh, exempt schools. That's an unusual burden on their town budget. But happily, they have unusual revenues from industry to help us. Yeah. We're somewhere in our happy little quiet Conway doing our thing. So I would ask you to make a motion and to, to vote as, as you feel about a residential factor of one to maintain a single tax rate. <coughs> Any questions? So the, the rate is going down. It's going it's down about 80 right? cents. So our taxes are gonna go up, but the rate itself goes down, right? It's going to be ameliorated. Mm -hmm. the, the, the increase in value is going to be partly offset by the reduction in the tax rate. Yes, okay. Um, I move that we um, maintain a residential tax rate for all. Right. Factor one. I'll second that. Factor one it is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And once again, not split. Again, yes, exactly right. And there is a paper for you to sign to that. We may also have to ask you to win gateway and do your electronic signatures. But this way, uh, I have a second thought. 26 today? Yes. Yeah, six, six, eighteen. There we go. What's that? We do not need it motorized. No, nope, thank you. <clears throat> One step less. We'll be submitting them first thing in the morning. I say in hopes of uh, getting a rate. They've been very good with turnaround lately. The one thing that hydro facility is possible to single people out for higher taxes, I would be okay doing that with them. <laughs> well, but it doesn't work that way. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of value there. But this year, their value has been dependent on rainfall because it is a hydroelectric and a lack of rainfall and drought situation, I'm sure, has had an impact on them. We'll find out because we uh, have to reevaluate that property every year. So our consultant gets uh, some of their income figures and so forth. This is privileged information, the exact numbers, but he can say certainly yes, oh, wow, well, they got hit or things like this to let us know what's going on. Well, we'll now adjourn to the front row here oh, yeah. of the lobby where we have to sign our end of it. And- uh, Oh, okay, into our office, yeah. So we will we'll move to our office and immediately adjourn. And thank you for your this portion of your meeting. Thank you, assessors. That's a group. <laughs> In there, and now they're busy <laughs> night at the town hall. It's hey, good. it's right. <laughs>
let's just um, skip over one script since Ron's here. We can talk about the possible appointment of Elizabeth Huntley Field as highway assistant. Mm -hmm. Well, I put forward um, Elizabeth Huntley Field. Uh, been looking for a long time. Yes, you have. And haven't had much success and haven't anybody applied. She did. I actually had two others that um, one. I'm not sure what happened. Um, things changed for her when she said she wasn't interested in She was looking for people. Um, <clears throat> so the hours weren't workable with me. This one, she's been 25 years in the administrative business at the VA hospital. And, she retired last year and we kind of worked away. That's perfect. So, like maybe not meant to work very well. She's the hours are what she's looking for. Just you know. Good. And this is an open ended appointment, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not an annual company. No, this would be a staff member, so yeah. it would be, yeah. right. it would be one appointment. Okay, great. Do you have any questions? No. No, it's going to be an easy job for her in the VA, so. <laughs> so, I'll make a motion to appoint Elizabeth Huntley Field as Conway's new assistant to the highway department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Congratulations. You have your assistant <laughs> along with us. Fine. <laughs> Thank sure, you very much. Sure. Sure. Nothing else for me. Uh, next. Uh, vote to appoint Cynthia Lawton Singer as an associate member for Forest and Trails. So this is a non voting member of that committee. Correct. Cynthia Lawton, I've seen her from several other presentations this year, but from the pollinators and the other questions about that. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the appointment of Cynthia Lawton Singer as an associate member for Forest and Trails. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. So um, we're setting a date, the date of special town meeting. We need one of those this year. Featured on it will be for the, the question about a question about what to do with the transfer station. Um, and so that's one of the things we'll be talking about. But so we do need to officially set that date. So I'm going to, and this is, this date has been pre approved by our moderator. And that is a, a note to, to self for the future when you're setting town meeting dates, you need the, the moderator's consent. You don't like it when you just. You tell them what the date is. That makes sense. Um, so, motion to set December tenth, Saturday, December. 10th. Oh, we just we have to talk about the time. Yeah, what time? So we did pass the revision to the bylaw at the last town meeting that allows us to adjust the time. Mm -hmm. It had been one o'clock. There are there were people that said they liked it at one o'clock, but. Uh, to be honest, the vast majority of feedback I got was, please don't take up my whole day anymore. Please do this in the morning. And there was the school wanted it at, school officials wanted it at 9 a.m., I think, but other people thought 10 o'clock, or some people said 9.30. So I don't really care which of those three. I thought, what was our last one? That one last one was at one o'clock, and that's because the, we had enacted a bylaw that said it had to be at one o'clock. Oh, so that pretty fast. That, that was the that was the attempt, but that's part of it too. You really that else is going to be on the agenda besides the, not that the transfer station is going to go quickly, but um, there's going to be capital requests, okay, and public safety building. All right, so it's 
So there's a potential for things to mm -hmm. get involved. Did the moderator Never, have yeah. a suggestion for a time? The moderator uh, does not have any clear suggestion for time, I think. I, I, I mean, given the feedback, I mean, I'm open to switching it to 10 and then see what kind of attendance and feedback we get. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's kind of the experimental idea. Maybe that could no. be one of the buttons, town meeting. What time do you want? Right. Yeah. You know, 9, 10, <laughs> 9, 9, 30, 10 for the next yeah. one, you know? All right. <laughs> yeah, I think earlier in the winter is better than the less. Right. Because uh, <coughs> it sorry. feels like midnight at 4 p.m. in the summer. So. You always have like holiday parties to go to oh, on right. Saturday. So. That's okay. true. That's true. Do you like 10 o'clock too, Rich? Yes. Okay. I'd say 10 o'clock. So, um, so I'll make a motion to have December 10th at 10 a.m. It's the date and time of our special town meeting at the Conley Grammar School. Optimistically, it's going to be much longer than 10 to 12. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good goal, actually. You should be able to come close to that. Um, so, all in favor? No, somebody second. second. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, contract with the well, since Priscilla's here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Priscilla and Carl. Yeah. So Priscilla and Carl, so we can move, move your item up since you're here. Thank you. And um, the letter, so you, you, did, you did submit a letter, but when you were here last time, you said, hey, I thought you draft the letter. Um, and, and you did. And thank you for that. Um, and then, I did. I did make a change to that letter. Um, basically, uh, more or less deleting the last sentence and substituting it. Um, so let me let me read the letter that I um, do you want to, want to show. Can you, can you show Priscilla the top of the new package? Are you picking up lunch? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Um, so, dear Representative Blaze, in March 2022, the Town of Conway Select Board wrote to you expressing our support for House Bills H912 and H1002, which would have required local community consultation and consent to let state land forest use decisions in said local community, including the state-owned lands in Conway. Although the legislative session has ended without a vote on these bills, we want to reiterate our support for the substance of H912 and H1002, and generally speaking, support for the principle of local input and consent on land and forest use decisions regarding publicly owned land. So to me, it says what you sort of were getting at, except not quite as directly. And rather than mandating that that they don't, you know, that there will be no cutting. And we get to decide whether there's cutting or not. And to me, that's really gets to the crux of the matter that it should be not a, a something, a decision that Boston imposes on communities, but rather that communities can decide for themselves. So I, uh, I don't necessarily disagree, but that is different than what was sent, I believe, when you said you were supporting the Act I have that one if you want to. I don't see that it was. <clears throat> it talks about our forestry plans and how that reflects it, but it doesn't necessarily <laughs> say outright.
touch you know, the same and support as those. What you don't have in front of you is the original proposed letter that Priscilla wrote. That is, that is on. It's somewhere in there, yeah. Um, and hmm. as I recall, I didn't change too much except that last sentence, but I might have. I might have muddled about but too much, but not nothing really that I thought changed in me. I don't see any change in the means of this. So. Um, so I just called it up on my phone. So the very last sentence that was in the original letter was, we want logging in our state forest stopped, including the state forest located in Conway. That was the last sentence. So that's what I did. That's what I changed to. We want to, we want to say over what happens in our state forest. That's what I changed it to. Um, the bill itself wasn't going to ban logging in state forests, right? It was, it was going to. It would have required local community consultation and consent. Yeah. They were in the packet, weren't they? Yeah, the bills were in the packet. I know, I know, like I want to. Yeah, they're good. But they are there. It's good. A little statutory analysis on a Monday night. It's good for you. It's good for good for what has it. Yeah. Um, the House 1002 didn't say much about local control of anything. No. It's actually, be, they have to have a public hearing when wildlife management does anything in their area of nature reserve. The, the one or two is the Forest Reserve Scientific Advisory Council that would have public meeting as well. For any substantial forest reserve management decision, they'll have a public hearing. And they, just, they have to seek, they shall seek and consider public input in the development and management plans. They shall make draft plans available for public review and comment. So it was sort of the second one that really talked about public hearing. But not quite public consent, not quite local consent, but public hearing. Oh, Carl, you have your hand up. You have two hands up. I wasn't sure which, if any, you could see. Can you hear me okay? You can hear me? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, so I hope it's, hope it's working. Um, the uh, 912 would have ended logging on state lands. And in March, the select board voted to support 912 and 1002. In speaking with Natalie Blay, she asked me to determine whether or not Conway still supported ending logging in, st in state lands, including state uh, Conway State Forest, which is why we brought this forth. So I'm trying to determine for Natalie whether or not the town still supports the position that they took in March. You see on 1002, 67, the timber in the nature shall not be sold in the destroyed. Right. So it's, it, it doesn't talk about no logging. It talks about no commercial logging, right? Right. So commercial logging means have contracting people um, who do not work for DCR to cut trees in state forests. That's how they do it. It's essentially the same thing.
So if it was strictly for disease prevention, that would not be commercial logging. There's no commercial value in diseased wood, right? Actually, no, they contract that out as well. They call it salvage logging. Is salvage logging the same as vegetation management? Probably not, but I'm not sure. And this was co-sponsored by Adam Hines. Yes. It still says vegetation management shall be allowed in circumstances to remove invasive species or pests, et cetera, et cetera. So the question is really whether we include a, include that final line that says we oppose all logging in commercial in, in big forests, right? Shows I feel good to set all commercial logging. Business tree or <laughs> tree that's bound to fall down and then cut it. I mean, is that included? Well, apparently, according to the, the law that we have previously supported, that would be uh, a salvage timber sale and would still be considered commercial logging, but it does give the state the permission to make uh, you know, to, to manage for pest control or whatever. So I don't I mean, so the letter that we have says we still support it. We supported it before, we still support it. I think that is pretty much the answer to Carl's question. And then, you know, for us, for me, the, the focus is really just on local control, um, which there's not enough of in either one of those laws, but that's still, that's still what I think is, um, that I know that just addresses my biggest concern about anything from the state in our town. And that's just, I just don't like them doing things without our say so. That's because it's kind of ours as well. And it's, we're the ones that have to, you know, build the roads to, you know, maintain the roads to get to it. We're the ones that have to pay for the ambulance to rescue people hiking in it. We're the ones that, um, all that stuff. So, we're the ones that have to tax each other more heavily because they're they they own that in our town. So we subsidize it directly more so than anybody else in the state. And that we should just be given a say so in its management. And not the perfunctory hearing or the ability to write in comments, but um, you know, actual come before the town and get our consent. Like in a democracy. Kyle and Carl, sorry, I just noticed his hand is up again. Well, that might um, have always been. Your digital <laughs> hand is up again, or was it up the whole time? It's up again. I'm okay. pretty good about taking it down. All right. um, a couple of things. I just like to remind folks that I don't know if you know anything about DCR's processes, but what they have done in the last 10 years, up until 2012, Conway State Forest was pretty much ignored by the state. Nothing happened there. And then in 2012, the state decided to come up with a system for 
designating three kinds of forests. And we got the designation of woodlands, which allows them, uh, which, which um, means what follows is what they call silvicultural treatment. None of this happened for hundreds of years before that. And now they've suddenly decided that our forest and many other ones are going to have a considerable amount of logging taking place in them. In the case of Conway State Forest, it's going to be about 275 acres, and it's going to take place over a period of a number of years. In other words, there's going to be landing zones and skitters and logging going on there for years. And that's why we brought this issue forward for a return, because the previous select board had already made it clear that they were opposed to that. And we were hoping that that was still the case. And Natalie had asked me to find out if that was true or not. I'm not sure if the letter that has changed still says you all support 912 and 1002 or the thereof. Yeah. Um, it'd be great if you could just post it in the chat so I could see it. It's really hard to keep things in mind and hearing them once, but. Um, you don't have a you don't have a text you can copy. No, I don't. No, this is not a. This computer isn't connected to my email or yeah, anything, yeah, so yeah. I can't pop it up. Sorry. Can you make me the co-host and I can put it up? Oh yeah, you've got it. Sure. Uh, well, oh, you're not logged in here. No, because no, you're right. I'm not. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, so Phil read it out. The, I, the, I think the main difference, really, I mean, it, this is a little Lessons. shorter than the original one. The, the, it just, it, it emits the line that says we oppose all, what is it, all logging. Um, um, but but the, um, section nine. Um, it, the sentence, the sentence that you were asking though about, Carl. It says, although the legislation session has ended without a vote on these bills, we want to reiterate our support for the substance of H912 and H1002. That's, that's a pretty declarative, clear statement. I'm fine with it as long as Natalie understands Conway supports no logging in Conway State Forest, which is what she asked me to find out. Yeah, well. well I mean, the, the, the proposed change to the... Um... To that or whatever to chapter 132a um, says no commercial activities except those essential the quiet enjoyment of the facilities by the people shall be permitted so i think that's i mean i, I guess that we could add a line that says we oppose commercial logging but i don't think it's necessary i mean if we support the bill then that's kind of so and to me also there was a difference too in what the legis what the agency can do what the dcr can do on their own as an administrator a change in administrative procedure versus what the legislature has to authorize them to do so whatever laws they operate under whatever those classification the 2012 classification system is all those other things those were laws from the legislator legislature um, well, well, the, the system that came arose in 2012 was something they came up with on their own based on what they claimed was authority from laws from many decades ago. Yes, that is correct. So, yeah, but the, the decision to seek local uh, consent for land, wherever that is something that, that that's an administrative act as to how they go about exercising their authority and they can do something like that without state legislative say so um, from what i know of the administrative procedure act and so that's that's why i like Beck, you know hectoring them on things like give us more local control because that's something that they actually have the authority to do on their own so that's which is that's my understanding of the how that how they work how, this, how any state agency works so um so we say we say that we're still in favor of those laws, which means what you want it to mean. And then we say, but give us local control, which is what I wanted to say too. So hopefully, hopefully we threaded the needle in a way that's satisfactory to all involved. And if they reintroduce the bills, why the hell are they? Yes, and we'd be happy to, because this is a big deal for people in this town that do not commercial logging is not 
it, you know, a, a, it is not a popular thing in this town of those big forests that people recreated every day of the week, every day of the year. Uh, and I'm, I'm up there all the time, and I'm, I don't, I've hardly ever been there without seeing somebody in those woods. Can you read the last sentence again? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it is a bit of a run on. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> although the legislative session has ended without a vote on these bills, we want to reiterate our support for the substance of H912 and H1002, and generally speaking, support for the principle of local input and consent on land and forest use decisions regarding publicly owned land. Could you substitute um, instead of? Uh... I'm sorry, I can't keep it in my brain long enough. Read it one more time. Although the legislative session has ended without a vote on these bills, we want to reiterate our support for the substance of H912 and H1002, and generally speaking, support for the principle of local input and consent on land and forest use decisions regarding publicly owned land. Instead of in generally, how about and in addition? It just makes it clear that it's two different things. Yeah, I think it's kind of, I think that's a distinction without a difference in my opinion, but. Um, well, it sounds to me when you say in general as if you're referring back to the two bills and that wasn't really part of the two bills. And then we really have to, the first sentence, the first sentence really kind of refers to that concept as with, with those two bills as well. Why did we, why did the, just so, just so I know, why did you use the substance? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Meaning there's some admissions to the whole of the bill. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it didn't mean anything. Okay. I mean, I mean, that's what happens when you get like yeah you know, when you get like really underpaid select board <laughs> i think we can probably remove those two words and um like carl's saying probably instead of generally speaking say and um, in addition support the principle all right you follow this so yeah remove the substance before of, of yeah, the substance of. And then instead of, and generally speaking, in addition. It does read better. I'll grant that. And I suppose Carl's assessment is. Yeah. So that would delay the signings that would have the letters to get reprinted. <laughs> but that's okay. So, all right, so we made those two changes. And, uh, thank you. All right, thank you. So, with that, make a motion to, uh, to sign the amended. A completely annotated new, new and abridged version. So moved. Yes, so of the letter to Natalie Blaze. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. So, right. Hey, have you heard anything more about the commissioner? Yeah, you we were just talking about that before the meeting. Natalie uh, touched base and said that she's still working on it, that she doesn't have a commitment yet, but. Um, you know, and you know what, we have a whole month before the election, so I don't know when we actually start thinking about that, but you know, it's, I, I, I get, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to be before an election. So I think that's how those things work. It's like I said, as soon as they, 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 they got, the fellow has probably never heard of Conway before. And as soon as he looks and realizes how far it is, um, 
and then how we just that's a whole day um but you know it's, it seemed so but natalie thinks that it's going to happen so and she did put her say so on it so yeah, I'll, I'll go with that especially because it's an election year in november what is it fourth is the election i don't know something like that six six, six yeah so um Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, if Kyle, if Kyle's still awake, <laughs> I'm here. How are you guys tonight? All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're here to talk about possible contract with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office for animal control services. So first off, Conway's longtime animal control officer, Joe Colucci, um, and he was doing it for a long time. 13 years. 13 years. And um, he's, uh, he, he's wanting to retire. He has retired. And yeah, he's... Um, and so we find ourselves without an animal control officer. And we are supposed to have one of those. Uh, so uh, Kyle, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you do and why you think that you're the option that we should pursue? Well, I'm Kyle Dragon. I'm the uh, full-time lead ACO for the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Um, been doing animal control since 2009 uh, in various towns. Uh, up that way, way back when, I was the ACO for Williamsburg, Goshen, and Plainfield uh, for several years until I moved out of the area. Um, this this program uh, has proven successful. Uh, we're up to 11 towns. If Conway decides to join in, that'll make 12. We started with seven. Um, and honestly, it's uh, your guys' discretion if you'd like to join in or not. I know that uh, it had been floated earlier this year, um, but the select board wasn't ready to make a decision at that point in time. There were some other avenues you guys wanted to look at first. And it sounds like, uh, based on my conversations with uh, your town administrator, that you might be at the point where you might want to consider signing on with us. So here I am. So, I mean, yeah, well, I guess my question would be, so we would not, we would no longer have our own animal control officer for the town. Is that the idea? That, that would be correct. You'd be contracted with the regional service. So, but we would still have to appoint someone um, responsible for handling dead domestic animals, it looks like. Uh, uh, which domestic animals you broke up? Um, so I'm just saying... The town shall provide animal related services not provided that include but are not limited to the following and g is handled dead domestic animals um i, I guess i said a question about who like how do we who would that be in our town i mean i, I assume it's joe right now right Defense or uh usually that bounces between depending on the scenario um animal control there are certain situations in which we would pick up deceased domestic animals dog hit by car, cat hit by car, is we're gonna try and identify who the owner was um, and give someone a chance to claim them so they can be reunited with their deceased pet. Um, uh, the highway department is also picks up at times. Uh, they do more of the wild life, like deer struck by car. Um, not that those usually hang out too long. And uh, that sort of, so it really, it, it, it varies depending on what, it, what the reason is. Uh, one of the things the town would still have to uh, find in a point would be an animal inspector. Uh, we do not offer that service at this time. That might be something we offer in the future, but not right now. The animal inspector, which is through the Board of Health. Yeah, the Board of Health has already okay. hired one of those. Okay, perfect. Well, I don't think so because they've brought it before the select board to a point. So I, they, I think they have somebody in mind, but yeah. I don't believe, I haven't heard the final decision. So do we know what, what the town share 
would be. Um, yeah. So, the so this is this is for both you and, and Chris. So the proposal is for it to be prorated this year since we're in the middle of the fiscal year. The top number, that five thousand. I can't see 5100 I think 5100 that would be the annual rate and for reference we currently pay the stipend of the animal control officer is 2100 um, and then all associated additional expenses are about another thousand dollars so our total annual cost right now as a town is just a little over three thousand and and so, so that is one of the things. Their budget, especially, especially, you know, right this year, it would not be a tremendous difference. It would be a seven hundred dollar difference. Mm -hmm. Next year, it would be a two thousand plus difference, mm -hmm. and that's something that you'd have to stand up at town meeting and explain. And yeah, you know, that to me, it's kind. Of, it's it, there's a sadness to it that we were unable to get anybody in town to step up because this is something that. Um, although the qualifications for it, the more quali the more training, the more uh, various certificates and capabilities someone has, and I'm sure that Kyle has more than you know the, most people would, with, you know, the better off you are. But still, this is something that local communities still could, in theory, maintain their own local service of, and it, you know, it does require someone with a pickup truck, for instance. Um, <laughs> And that we do have a lot of pickup trucks in this town. Yes. And you'd think that some, but, but you know, and, and honestly, I think we could have done a better job of outreach to, to, to get people's attention. You know, I, there's very few people know that we were looking for this, but that's part of also for the audiences and this, you know, people are so fragmented in what, where they get their information these days, it's hard to reach people. Um, it wasn't the it wasn't the current sent online. If I may, one of the things in talking with Joe that he mentioned because he had recommended that we go um, with the sheriff's office, and he said one of the difficulties he had is that it's a twenty four seven on call job, and that makes it really problematic. For I don't know how you feel about that, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, my cell phone is never turned off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the requirements too for um, firearms, correct? With the control officer. Yeah, so um, through the sheriff's office, we are sworn law enforcement officers. So we do carry everything that a normal law enforcement officer would have. Um, so we are able to dispatch animals if need be. Um, and we're able to, if need be, pursue our own charges against something. And I can see the benefit of that. And I can also see that there will be some residents concerned about the, mili the sudden militarization of our animal control officer. Although, um, you know, we do in, in the past, we have, there have been encounters with people that have been unpleasant to deal with. And, um, uh, you know, and that if I was the animal control officer, I might have wanted to have a bulletproof vest like Kyle's wearing right now, and, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, um, but, uh, and, and we are being asked to sign a two year contract. Well, that, see, that's the other thing, because if, if, if it really is your goal to make, to, to try to get somebody in town to step up and provide, you know, and, and be of service to their own community, the theory being that. You know, when you have long term relationships with people, things can, you know, when you're in the same town and you know their kids and you know their whatever, then the, people generally treat each other better. It's hard, it's hard to be back completely crazy to people that you know you're going to have breakfast with the next morning. Um, so, you know, it's there's, there's, there's a, but so, so to me, that that was what I had the toughest part was, was making the long term commitment. And I know. The end of a fiscal year you can get out of it with one year's notice but you know to me that well you know when when, when we find if somebody is willing to step up i would like to be able to just get that person up and going rather than having to wait a year and a half or we could be could potentially be a year and 11 months um and it's you know whatever so to, to me th 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 this is 
you know, this would be something that we do out of necessity. You know, we do, we, it's, you, when, when someone calls in an emergency like that, you, you have to be able to send someone. You have to be, when, you know, when there's a dog hit, when there's an animal hit by a car, whatever, you have to be able to send someone. When there's a bat that, you know, that just died inside your living room, you, you, whatever, you have to be able to call someone, things like that. So when it goes to Yesterday. He, yeah. <laughs> he's been so kind to kind of limp along and he's been waiting the bated breath for us to get this done. Yeah. I did investigate with a number of town administrators. I put it out to spam and that kind of thing and got some job descriptions, which are pretty involved. And, you know, I got somebody, I think, way down in the southern part of the state saying, you want to share one? Because we've been looking for two years and we can't find one. So, when Joe recommended this as an option, I kind of jumped at it, I have to admit. It was like, well, and you know, you know, we advertised for it. Joe had recommended somebody who will not be available any sooner than a year and a half from now, but who's interested. Oh, but I did want to point out, and Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, this is FY23, 24, and 25. So this is a three-year contract, correct? That is correct. Okay. So it would be up for renewal entering FY26. Right. So we would in FY24 have to say we're just doing through the end of this contract and that's rates are locked in for the entire year of the contract. Did you hear that? I did not. Are rates locked in for the entirety of that three-year contract? It is not. They are on sliding scale depending on the number of towns that join. If more towns join the program, your assessment will go down. If someone were to leave, then that amount would be redistributed amongst the remaining towns. We have a list of nearby towns that are involved in the program and those who are not. I, uh, you have Shelburne, Buckland, Charlemont. Um, those are the ones that are closest to you. Then we have Monroe, Heath, Coleraine, Northfield, Gill, Bernston, Leiden, New Salem. Okay, so we need to get Wait, Ashfield and Waitley <laughs> on board, Deerfield, well, Deerfield's not much, but Ashfield and Waitley. Or, or contact them and share whoever they have or something like right. that. But, um, that. You know, the other thing is too, that as a Conway Select Board, we we have to sit and, and, and adjudicate, a, you know, at least it happens every year, um, animal, issue, animal ownership issues amongst neighbors because we have a right to farm bylaw. And the way that that works in our bylaw is that when there's an issue with each other, with with farm animals and getting loose and whatnot. Then they come to this. With the, the select board has to have a hearing. Yeah. And one of the benefits of having like a Joe Colucci was that you know he was available. He would let the select board know what was going on with neighbors, and so we would have sort of an insight into what the actual state of the relationship is. My my concern is that you know with the regional whatever I, I saw that all your responsibilities is you know con contact you know you had contacts and whatnot but it didn't really spell out like what your obligations are what your custom and practice is with regard to communicating with select boards and um or th you know through the town administrator like what what it is that you're doing in town is it just an annual report that we get is you know so i do do an annual report and then if Conway wants something more, we could definitely furnish that as well. Um, most towns are happy with the annual report and then if they need something, they ask for it. If there's like an ongoing issue um, or something's happened that the select board should be aware of, I'm assuming you would contact us. Absolutely. Us um, so basically as far as livestock complaints, things like that go, I do do a preliminary investigation on them as Conway is right to farm, there is that um, resolution of grievances in your right to farm bylaw. Um, we're actually going through through New Salem right now with a rooster, with curling roosters. Um, and uh, basically, I gather everything together, put it all together in a report, and present to the select board with this is the issue, this is what's going on, here's the involved players, and then the select board has a hearing based on that. Same with any complaints for nuisance fingers dogs or anything else that really needs to be elevated to a select board level as you are the um, judi judicial power for the town of Conway. Are you the only officer that all the towns you listed share? 
No, uh, so with bringing on New Salem and then honestly Lighting and Bernie after, we have our, added a part-time officer as well, um, who works 20 hours a week. And as more towns come on, then we'll be able to bring on more officers to uh, spread out call volume as needed. Yeah, I feel a lot better if we just had like a one year trial period instead of a three year commitment off the bat. But it's agreed. Yeah. I feel the same way. I never like sliding scales either. And it's, um, yeah, I agree with you. If that's something that we could do, I'd be all for it. But three years is when we have to discuss options. Is there a possibility of just doing a one-year contract or a two-year contract? Um, I can't answer that question right now. Uh, this was a contract that was developed by the sheriff's office and they would have to be the ones that would decide if they were going to change that along with uh, probably the advisory committee would have to be brought in as well, um, which is made up of all the member towns to, to make sure they were also on board with that as well. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would kind of ask that that any um, town that's new getting into this program has never been in it before hasn't been at the trial period. I would understand if we were already committed for years that we would keep signing for a three year contract, but on the onset, I don't feel comfortable going to anything else to say. Yeah, I'm Is that something you could get back to us with, Kyle, whether or not that would be allowed? I could definitely check on it. So what would be the term you'd be looking at, like through the rest of this fiscal year or this fiscal year next? Through the rest of this fiscal year would be the easiest financially probably for the town to, to deal with and probably for everybody else concerned, just planning wise, because that's how you plan budgets through your fiscal year. Right, but we're planning, you're going to be planning our FY24 in the next yeah. couple of months. Yeah, so if true. we don't know what to put in there, how soon will you know the budget for FY24? You have to tell people pretty soon, right? Because of their budget seasons? Um, as of right now, unless there's any adjustments uh, through uh, towns leaving or going, uh, we'd probably be looking at going to FY24 with that $5,000 figure. What's been, is, you know, off the top of your head, the, the history of past increases, like how, how much is it, has the service been going up every year? Um, I can tell you that uh, we started in 2019, uh, August, then COVID hit, and the sheriff's office opted to level fund everything, and it only got increased this year. Um, so moving forward, I'm not sure, honestly, what that's going to be, because Again, it was just this year it got increased. So that's three years and the increase in those three years, and it's a three year contract. All right. Um, so can, can we put this off for two weeks and get an answer? You think we, you, we, would you be able to have an answer? Do you think they'll have an answer in a couple of weeks or a sense yeah, probably, whether it would be possible? Probably, yes. All right, can, can we say not just the end of the fiscal year, but a year term as well, those two options? So you're committed to on that. Exactly. Well, you're still gonna have to budget the money for FY24. So I would think the option would be either the rest of this fiscal year mm -hmm. or this fiscal year in FY24. Does that make sense that we would yeah, it'll be the rest of this fiscal year. All right. I mean, so we have we have a line of the town budget for the animal control office already, right? So we right. could just bump that up to you know fifty one fifty for FY. Well, well, for this next fiscal year, it would be being bumped up to thirty eight because we'd we'd be prorated. So that's what. So right. that that so that would be. I did speak with Mike about it, and there are there are ways for us to bump that up. So actually, it might be. I'll have to I'll have to talk to him again. But so I guess the question would be because you still would want to know and put the monies in 
the budget that you start working on in December. Mm -hmm. So if you have a contract that goes till next September, you're still going to have to put a certain amount of money in there. Right, it sounds to me like they work on a fiscal year too, because we work on fiscal right. years. Yeah, so. it's government. We all do. Yeah, so it's got to be, I would assume you could say, please let us know if we can do through for the rest of FY23 and just deal with that. Yeah. Um, and then if you don't, you know, you could we could put a placeholder in for FY24 just in case. Right. That's what we should and do. And then, yeah. That's what we should do. Yeah. I mean, if, if we could do a con, I mean, if, if we can't do a contract, for, well, either way, I mean, just plan to budget 5150 because worst case scenario is we can't find someone mm -hmm. to act, someone local to be the own control officer. And then if we have to argue for this mm -hmm. at town meeting, we can say, those of you who don't want Kyle, do you do you happen to know? Um, because I like I said, I'd spoken with some town administrators who have been desperately searching. Do you know what the um statute says about I know I know we have to have one, but do they what do they do if you don't have one? <laughs> um I want to say they can levy a fine, but I'd have to get back and look at that. It's not a statute I look at very commonly. I've been told that they call you up and yell at you first. Okay. Um, but then that, you still have I'm glad they have your phone number. No, no, they have your phone number. Um, they have your phone number. They have your phone. They actually, they probably do have my phone number now that you mentioned it. I give it to everybody. I <laughs> so did, did, that, did that make sense, Kyle? That if we, you'd ask if we could do a one year, you know, the rest of this fiscal year trial contract? Yeah, I could, I could definitely ask for that. Um, I, I would, has a guess that I can probably get that. I don't think I could push a trial contract through twenty through fiscal year twenty four. Yeah, no, right. that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, just the rest of this fiscal year, the prorated that you gave us, and yeah, if that's possible. And if we know before, I was just looking up the date when it is in October. Oh, it's that's the Columbus Day weekend. So I don't know if you want to do it on the Tuesday the eleventh. Do what? The next meeting. Columbus yeah, State, didn't we change that by bylaw to where it's something else? Indigenous. No, it's it, it's Indigenous Peoples Day slash Italian Heritage Day. Okay. Or so, something. I don't know. Anyway. I think so. I forget. Yeah. But if it's if, hard to keep up with these things. If you think you could let us know within say the next week. Yeah. So possible. are we looking at coming back on on the eleventh? 11th, I, it, it's up to the select board, but I would assume that it would be the day after the normal day, which is that Monday. That's fine with me. I'm, I'm just looking at um, it, the law. It says that what happens if we fail to make an appointment of an animal control officer? The commissioner shall appoint an animal control officer for that same event. And that's who it would be. <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 I would imagine. And I, I imagine, imagine we're not off the hook for paying. <laughs> right. But as long as we're fine. That would be the worst thing <laughs> to have to pay money for nothing yeah. except you're not making a decision. Actually, that would be the worst is when they actually come to your meeting and with handcuffs and drag you all out <laughs> of here. That would be the worst. <laughs> but, so would that be possible, you think, Kyle? Uh, I, I, I can probably have something this week, at least an idea anyways. Um, okay. And then if I have a deadline for when I needed answer by that makes it even easier because I could say no you need to actually get back to me. Okay. So right. if we're shooting for the 11th then I can you, with Columbus Day that means your posting will go up Wednesday the 5th to get your 48 hours notice. Well no it could still weekend. go up no, it could Thursday. go up Thursday Thursday Friday but then it's the Tuesday meeting it would so be Thursday yeah it'd probably be up, Thursday yeah. as usual. Okay. But Ronnie could call you and let you know. Oh, well, I'll, yes. yeah, we'll yes. be in touch for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And next time you'll be first on the agenda and you won't make your way. That's what we need to discuss pickleball. All <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Okay, so you, you wanted to vote to um, vote to table, uh, postpone yeah. to the table, table for two weeks and, okay. get, and, and continue our discussion with Kyle. There is, a, just to let you know, there is a stipulation in here that does say that any party may terminate its participation in the agreement at the end of any fiscal year, so long as at least one year before its termination is given. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Right. So we start it and then say we will terminate it the yeah. day we start it. <laughs> yeah. So you could just, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's better just to be clear headed about exactly what we're doing and not have to do advanced I, I think, advanced linguistic gymnastics like that. Yeah, I think that I think a trial year is yeah. it's a very good idea. Thanks, Kyle. I know it's kind of giving you the run around, but we appreciate no, it. It's fine. I mean it's it, it is what it is, and I understand that there's politics and everything else is again I'm juggling eleven other towns, so I know how that works. This, is, this yeah. is one of those things. This is one of those things that when it's going well, people don't come up to you and say, Hey, thanks, you know, that the the, the, the whole animal control thing, you guys got that down, <laughs> you know, like people don't say that. What they say is, you know, <laughs> I've been calling five times and I can't get all anybody and nobody's coming out here. What the hell are you doing? Da, 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 da. That's, that's the only time you hear about it. Right. And um, I would offer the suggestion. Um, I don't know if, if you guys are familiar with any of the select board members in any of the towns I mentioned that we already covered, but uh, feel free to reach out to them and see how it's been working for them too, just to get a better idea. So, so going into it, you have a better sense that no, we were told this was a great program or this was a horrible program, whichever way they, whichever way they decided to go. Yeah, you know, and, and and I've done that, and it's funny, like you don't really you, people's projections and opinions like get in the way of stuff like this because there are so many people that just don't want there to be like a big powerful Franklin County government. There's so many people that are just opposed to the concept of regionalizing, regionalizing services because bit by bit, by a thousand cuts, that's how you lose your local town government is you know, when, when you can't get people to step up to things. And when, when, you know, when we used to do all of our inspections for the Board of Health, we couldn't get people to keep doing them. And you know, now we're starting to need to use Franklin County services. And I know the sheriff's is a little bit different than the rest of the county government. And, it's not even a county government, it's FERCOD. Um, but, you know, still the, the, the thing is that people do have issues about that. And, um, you know, it's what's the point of having a town government if you begin to just outsource all these things to regional services, what's the point? What's the, you know, it's, and, and then all of a sudden it's one single government and you're like everywhere else in the country where you got no say over how your tax dollars are being spent. So, <laughs> Kyle, did you say Charlemont was one of those towns? Because I know we did. <laughs> <correct. laughs> Are we having another field trip? <laughs> the next time they have a dead domestic animal call, we'll tag along. <laughs> I, I, I heard you say Roe. Say Charlemont? Uh, Monroe. Oh, Monroe. Not Roe. Okay, got it. We said, but did you say Coleraine or Charlemont or both? Uh, both. Uh, yeah. On this side of 91, we cover Leiden, uh, Shelburne, Buckland, Corain, Heath, Charlemont, and Monroe. I do know that one of the members of Leiden. All right. All right. So we'll talk to you Tuesday in a couple of weeks. All right. Yeah. I will put the 11th on my calendar. Thanks, okay. And then you and I will talk sooner, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Thank I you so much. Right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So, what else? It was not anticipated 48 hours. Nothing. Was there anything? Town administrator update. You had it. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody read it? I, yes. <laughs> I did go to Waitley today. That was very interesting. So, um, yeah. See you later. Yes, and do tell. Well, um, so one of them was was put in when they did their whole remodel in 2019. Right. And then the second one was just put in this past March, April in the town library. And the library is a similar situation to what it would be here. They took a couple of closets that were above and just put it in. The one in the town hall worked like a charm. Um, it's very interesting. It's one of those you have to keep your finger on the button, which is yeah, yeah, because it's, it's really just a mechanical lift. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's a platform yeah. for. But um, when we got to the one at the library, the, it worked from the downstairs, but upstairs there was an issue with the door closing. 
so it wouldn't it would just kind of close and open again. <laughs> Is that under warranty or something? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not worried about them, but it was just it was just interesting to see. But they're they seem perfectly perfectly good. They're the less expensive way to go. And since it was really, it seemed really more just to be sure that we can get somebody upstairs in a wheelchair if we need to. So there will be more to follow. And with are you going to apply for grants to also yes. cover the cost of the creating the shaft? Um, I don't. I don't believe that's in that grant. I can double check on them. I don't think it is because I don't have an estimate itself. for that. I only have the quote for, um, uh, yeah, for the itself. So, yep, and that's due on Friday. So I'll be busy with that this week. Yeah, it's all right. You know, I just I come from I come to all these elevator slash lift issues just sort of scarred from my experience on the frontier school committee, which is the the day the day before we were going to pass a budget that allowed for several new hires and all new software and like all these exciting things. The elevator went. And it was a 90 something thousand dollar repair job. And it basically meant like we couldn't do anything good. It was just, it completely ate the whole discretionary budget part that we had. And I, these things just terrify me because, um, you know, it's just all goofy. And, and that was a particular thing that all the guts of the machine were at the very top of it, which was this dead space between like where it was heated and where it wasn't. And it was, subject to wild swings and temperature and humidity and just um and and it failed when we were interviewing new superintendents it was down to the two finalists and um the one that i liked better was the one that got stuck in the elevator <laughs> <laughs> and then it was you know the, the when you call and you say someone's stuck in an elevator the fire department and, and the police, they come and they have the lights flashing outside of your meeting for like two hours while they're dealing with it. The whole thing was just, <laughs> it's just bad. It's just, it was just a bad look. Um, so just hoping that we have better luck with that. So, I mean, uh, other than that, just to, just to circle back to the uh, thoughts about the Charlemont transfer station, the one thing that I just wanted to keep everybody in mind that our our clicker our clicker at town meeting has four maybe that's a b c and d we've never ever used c or d yet but this this is this is what i have in mind to use c and d for for the first time and so um and so what what i am um what, what i thought of is this what i what i'd like to do and this is up to everybody else too is that uh, even though it is a select board decision about how to manage this, to, to say we'll, we'll, we'll to, to come up with four proposals that we could live with and let the town vote it out. And, and, and I would suggest that you do that in two phases, that you first have a vote to narrow the four down to two finalists and then chuck, them at, chuck the votes and start over with just those two. Um, it, uh, it just seems a bit much otherwise. otherwise. But... Um, and that one of those four options should be to keep it the way it is and just pay more through property tax because that is what we both receive feedback that there are some people that would like it to be kept the way it is mm -hmm. as um and so that should be there's there's no there's no you know there's no uh i don't know we're not going to hear that probably again but from anybody there's we, we hear from people that want changes and so but i think it is fair to say one of the options should be to keep it the way it is but so that would leave three to do a combination of something to do with the window stickers with the bag stickers or something else and so but and just you know try to keep in mind well, I, how you'd like that to go or I mean, I think that's an interesting idea if each of the options can be associated with like the bottom line cost to the town or in the, like the projected, the projected bottom line based upon revenue that we get from selling, you know, stickers or bags or whatever. Um, yeah, if I could, if I could break that up by resident, because one of the things that, of course, people don't really get, they think, oh, it's free and they don't understand trash is coming in from out of town. So we're paying for other people's trash. Right. 
So if you have an option on there that says, well, leave it the way it is, then they should know what the bottom line is, how much they're paying for other people's trash. <laughs> right. And exactly. how they're paying. Right. And, yeah, and it's in the property. You should, also, you should also know that Jan Amin has volunteered to come to town meeting and be available to answer questions um, about some of the, which I think is would be a good idea. Oh, I think it's an excellent idea. And the other thing is just, you know, and we both, we volunteered there for a day. And what struck me is the strength of feelings that people have, the strength of attachment that they have to their transfer station. Um, and how like uh, people really like feel strongly. It's, it's, it's their, when you think about it, it's their most direct interaction with their local government. They go there once or twice a week. And um, people have strong feelings about it. So I like the idea of, hey, Okay, we changed it because the town voted this way rather than eh, we sat back and thought this was best for you. Um, yeah, I agree. People don't like change. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I told and, my husband that this might be happening. And he said, Well, I'm going to talk to my elected representative. <laughs> 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 How about so? Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me get a cup of coffee. <laughs> 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 I will not stand for this. But I said, well, then you're going to have to come to town meeting. <laughs> so involved in that, though, are, are, are we going to include, because I want to get rid of construction debris altogether. I should go to Greenfield. So are we including that in the vote? It's all person. Because that all goes in the bulky waste mm -hmm. container now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. certain things are not supposed to go in there like sheetrock. That's not, it's just not allowed. So, you know. Yeah, mm. but it's happening. So, right. yeah, it's plus, in there. plus we're going to have the mattresses changing. Uh -huh. I mean, as of November first, that's now law. You know, so um, there's there's going to be a lot going right. on. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I assume we'll put together that another you know special town meeting more light that kind of you know breaks this out so people have something to refer right. to as far as you know what those changes are going to be. I guess it depends on how much you want to put in at once. If you want to deal with both the issue of potentially having a bag and bulky at the same time. I mean, the select board does have the purview to do all this on their own. So it, it's up to you what you want to get input from the town on. Just put up the bulky waste container itself. The, one, yeah, the, 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 what, the important thing is that what we, the, the options that we do um, come up with is, uh, should be options that we can support, like, because mm -hmm. once you put it out there for a vote, you never know how it's going to come out. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've learned not to give a choice that you don't want, not, not to ask a question if you don't like the answer. You know, if you know in advance, you're not going to like the answer. So, do you, do you want to come up with those options, or would you like one of us? Well, I think it's it's it. There's enough meat on the bone that we'd probably be, all be better off just coming up with our own and then comparing notes and seeing. You know, yes. I think three heads are better than one. Yeah. That that works. So, and which and. You know, if we're gonna if we're gonna be. I know October is going to see you joint finance committee meetings, and um, we're going to have to start figuring this stuff out. So very quickly, yes. So October eleventh, we should probably revisit this subject. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Do you think we might have some of those figures by then? I mean, I know you've got a lot going on. Part of the process. Well, it's not that so much. Is that you know, if you break it out and you say, okay, let's say that we. Um, one of the options is that you're going to give everybody 52 free stickers, right? Mm -hmm. One of the unknowns is how much that will reduce. I can get good numbers from Jan and good estimates, but I can't say exactly yeah. how much will that reduce our trash, trash, which is therefore going to reduce what we're, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess it depends on how you want to break it out. If you want to say, in the here's the budget, and we can certainly give what the budget is. Now that's in its own department. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly divide into each of the lines for tipping and hauling the number of people who get stickers and use it. Right. You know. Um, so. And just within that sticker okay. category, there was so much variation. There was, yeah. you know, Char Charlemagne only gave the free stickers to seniors over the age of seventy, which I noticed that cut off. I was like, that's. 
Pretty harsh. See, I don't know. You see, everywhere else, you're a senior at 65 or 62 or 55. Um, AARP at 55. There you go. Or maybe 50. Maybe something like that. But so, um, you know, and Janamine, Janamine talked about, you know, 100 stickers for everybody, and then seniors get more, more free stickers than that. Uh, generate as much trash. They don't need all the stickers. And yeah, so, so there, there, but there was a the generation of trash is the key, I believe, is what most people are going to want to know. The stickers that I get at the beginning of the year, is that enough for me where I don't have to pay for more stickers? Yeah. I, I think that's what's going to really be the key because most people will say, oh, I can do that if I start recycling but, more. And, and then it was, you know, it was, is any bag, no matter how big, is that one sticker or is what Charlemont did, the 13 gallon bag was one sticker, the 30 gallon bag was two stickers and the contractor bag was three stickers. Right. So there's also all that. So there's, there are many permutations many. to consider. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know. It would be very nice to know going into annual town meeting what the town would like to do in terms of stickers, I must say, because if we, you know, you, you need a lead in period mm -hmm. and to plan for the next fiscal year, it would just be really nice to know in December whether or not that program is going to roll in for that fiscal year and what we need to do in the budget for that. I know what I would want. I, I have one sticker for a regular bag to for a contractor. It's a consumption tax based on. How much you consume. Well, that's that's absolutely literally what the pays you throw is based on. Right. It's like when you go into the store and you buy five pounds of potatoes, it doesn't cost you the same as 10. Right. Exactly. So it just makes sense. I think the disconnect really is that people they let they just like to think it's free and they don't understand how much it's costing everybody right. in the tax base. Which is why I think it'd be great for Jan to be there. So it's one of those things that historically people just like don't bother me with details about the trash just let me go and throw yeah. my trash out and then just tax me um but right but then you could say well i'm paying jam. for your trash i don't want to pay for your trash i don't make a whole lot of trash <laughs> and the growing thing in, in in our town is people that don't generate any trash yeah and that's which i i'm not one of them <laughs> Sorry, because people can sell their stickers and make some money. Oh, that's true. Or we, or one of the suggestions was to have a pot. So if people, if there's families, then they got a bunch of diapers, or there's something where people need it, you could donate your stickers back to other people to use. But that would, if we knew how many stickers were going out, we should theoretically know how many tons of trash are going in. And we're not forcing anybody to get stickers, yeah. right? So if people aren't actually if you're don't, not charging for them. Well, you know, if we're not actually, if you don't actually have trash to throw away. Oh, right, right, right. That's right, exactly, yeah. And then what to do about the permit, the, the annual permit, the window sticker. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it has a value, it has an intrinsic value besides just being, it's, that's how you can tell whether someone's from Conway when you're passing them on the road. That's how the police can tell that that's they're why somewhere. You still get the, the windshield See? sticker and or yeah, the windshield sticker, and that comes with a certain amount of garbage bag stickers. Get a windshield but, sticker, yeah, you get sixty garbage bag stickers. But then, do you right. keep that at ten dollars, or you go no. towards what Deerfield does, which is what seventy or 100, 85. 85. So, $85. like, so they, there's lots of different stuff to know. There are it's a like, lot. So the question is, what is the We could goal? just pass the whole thing back to the Board of Health, too. <laughs> <laughs> we tried this. We decided it's not for yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. This sucks. You do it. Speaking as your town administrator, I would recommend that you decide upon what question you want answered. And then we can develop. You know, do you, are, you, are you dealing with a sticker and bulky? You want to deal with the whole shebang? Do you want to? Parse it out. Do you want to do stickers now and then maybe bulky at annual town meeting? Do you want your property taxes increased because this is costing us a lot of money and it will cost them more money? Yeah. Do you want to change the clickers to where they have 12 buttons to pick from? Because I, I will say, <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I think the more things you throw it in, in one meeting, yeah. the more confusing it's going to be. So it'd be nice if there was like just because there's so many issues that we could go on about it at the transfer station. So say if you just wanted to do stickers, 
Yeah, you choose so. those options, you all develop your, and then I'll do my best to get the numbers behind it and figure out what, not, you know, what's going to be asked on the click or what they're going to be clicking for. And then we just go from that and then, you know, maybe things will even out and then, then you can go on to the next, which I think bulky is probably the only other big one is just what do you charge for bulky items? I can't remember what Jan said as far as how much it cost us and how much if that is actually divided into the amount of people that actually own stickers to on this day, how much the sticker should also actually be worth for us to break even. It costs us two between two fifty and three dollars for a bag of trash for our average bag of trash. That's what I remember saying. If you that. know what I mean, though, like the annual cost yeah. divided by the number of sticks, sticker windshield sticker holders we have. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. Appalling is like fifty thousand dollars a year, and fifteen hundred people have stickers, which we don't even have. That no, it's about. Uh, it's just under. I say it's usually around eight. 800 something between 800 and a thousand that get stickers okay so even a thousand at ten dollars right ten thousand dollars like getting in in how much mm -hmm. does it cost to send them? let's say 800 <laughs> quite a bit more than oh that. yeah, oh, yeah. Like 10 four, times it's like yeah. 49 right. three seven eight whatever right so. so each sticker holder so the budget's almost two hundred thousand. So, if hauling yeah. is fifty thousand, well, that's the yeah. I don't know. Making that up, that was something about. It's, like it's around, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but that's, that's only like for trash. Lot. We're that's, not even right. talking recycling, and yeah. right. So yeah, that's, that's like out. sixty-two dollars approximately. So that's sixty-two dollars a year per sticker holder. Mm -hmm. So we're clearly not. Working. I mean, that could be one option. Is we just every year we just. <laughs> You, you could do that. I wouldn't recommend it because, you know, they're, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, just because it's going to be like serious sticker shop on them. And, yeah. and one of the things is That's like, one that they won't vote for. Right. <laughs> yeah. And if are my, are, they're going to say, are my taxes going to go down by the same amount that this right. is going up? And, you know, so. Um, yeah. That's an easy answer. We're at a loss to this day, and that's why we're discussing. Right. That. So yeah, I mean, if we can, because I think Charlotte they said that they're they're close to breaking even. Yeah. Which would be if we broke even, then that's the number we need. And now, you know, what do we need to break even? Yeah. They also narrowed it down to just one employee instead of two, so that's right. an extra. Mm -hmm. 14, 15 bucks an hour. So the one to be seventeen bucks. The only one. That's that literally. Um, Thorn, the only one that works. Yeah. Oh, yes. really <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, it's two four-hour shit. I mean, it's barely over. It's oh, right, so. it was two five-hour shit. But that's right. only ten percent of the budget. Right, but to that's to take out one person. Yeah. Twenty thousand dollars out of the twenty thousand dollar budget. So. That's trying not to be sure that more that's. <laughs> How it works. That's what you're looking for. Those are the savings you try to get. Ten percent here, ten percent there. Yeah, see the picket signs. Don't mess with my trash. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hands <laughs> off. I'll hands off my trash. <laughs> I'll bag you. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your bands off my trash. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay. Yes. And so we're gonna. The next meeting will be. Tuesday, October 11th, which is already just going to be a jam packed, potentially really unpleasant day for me. <laughs> so but we're going to make it go for it. It's going to be our select board meeting, too. And let's hope that I'm in good enough shape to come. I mean, I would be trying to like Wednesday instead, too. I know it's always good to get Tuesday after it, but if Tuesday's really bad for you, I can. Yeah, we got it. We got to do the warrant messes. When you when you mess the warrants up, it messes everybody up. We got to do it. We got to do it. So okay, Tuesday, October 11th, 6 p.m. will be our next meeting. With that I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.